Hi, I'm Fabrizio Michelassi. I'm a professor of surgery and the Louis Adbury uh, Stimson professor uh, and chairman of the Department of Surgery at Wild Cornell Medical College, New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm really pleased to uh, be here and uh, tell you about uh, what I do here at uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, I'm a gastrointestinal surgeon uh, with expertise in uh, gastrointestinal oncologic surgery, which means cancer of the colon, the rectum, the pancreas, the uh, liver, the stomach, and expertise also in uh, uh, chronic inflammatory bowel disease of the uh, intestine, which uh, again means uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Over my uh, 30 years of experience, I've had uh, the uh, great pleasure of taking care of uh, thousands of patients with Crohn's disease. And uh, I've uh, contributed uh, to the understanding of the disease and uh, what surgery can contribute uh, to, uh, to the same. Uh, because of uh, this uh, experience that I've had, uh, I've had the fortune of uh, writing uh, more than 200 papers in Crohn's disease. I've edited a book. I've uh, prepared a movie uh, uh, for the diffusion of uh, new techniques. Uh, uh, and uh, I've been uh, able to uh, talk nationally and internationally on the subject. The Crohn's disease uh, is uh, a difficult disease for the patients. It's a disease that usually uh, uh, presents uh, early in life. It's a disease that unfortunately uh, we have uh, new medications, but even the best uh, medical treatment may not be able uh, to take care of complications. It's a disease that uh, once it has been taken care of uh, medically and surgically, recurs. So we know how difficult it is to live with this disease. And when patients come to me, the first thing I do, without any question, is to understand whether all possible medical treatments have been exhausted. If not, it's time to uh, review the uh, medical treatments and come up maybe with a new uh, personalized uh, uh, treatment for the uh, Crohn's disease for that particular patient. But if all medical, optimal medical treats, treatments have been exhausted, uh, surgery can be life-saving, surgery can be uh, life-changing. And uh, surgery, nevertheless, needs to be done uh, with uh, some very important principles in mind. The first principle is that this is a recurrent disease. And so we need uh, at surgery to save as much bowel as possible uh, for these patients because Crohn's may recur and the same patient may require additional surgery in the future. The second principle is nowadays we can do most of these procedures in a minimally invasive fashion, laparoscopically, to avoid uh, major scars and also to uh, facilitate uh, the recovery from, uh, from the surgery. And the third principle is that with modern uh, uh, treatments, uh, we can certainly avoid, uh, in the majority of uh, the uh, situations, uh, to uh, have to place uh, uh, stomas and ileostomies and colostomies in these patients. But let me go back to the fact that this is a recurrent disease and the importance, therefore, to uh, maintain as much and save as much intestine as possible. About uh, 30 years ago, uh, new surgical techniques occurred and were devised, they're called strictroplasties. Strictroplasties are diseases for which you can take care of the uh, strictures and the narrow points caused by Crohn's disease without having to resect uh, intestine. And uh, by doing so, therefore, sparing uh, the entire length of the intestine or as much as possible. And about 15 years ago, I was uh, 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 proud uh, to uh, introduce a new strictroplasty, which at that point was called the side-to-side -side, uh, uh, isoperistaltic strictroplasty, and since then has been referred to as the Michelassi strictroplasty uh, for very advanced uh, Crohn's disease with multiple strictures over a, a very long period of time. And so uh, I think that uh, nowadays uh, the use of strictroplasties, when feasible, is uh, able to uh, decrease uh, the, uh, and limit uh, the uh, need for bowel resections in these uh, patients.
Well, studies have demonstrated that the majority of patients, uh, and some studies have suggested that all patients uh, sooner or later will require surgery for complications of Crohn's disease. So I think it's a safe bet to say that probably 70 to 80 percent, 85 percent of all Crohn's patients will require some surgery during their lifetime. Now surgery is uh, done for patients who are medical treatment uh, unfortunately uh, is not taking care of the complications uh, of the Crohn's uh, and is done also for specific complications such as uh, obstruction when the Crohn's disease uh, closes down the intestine or infections uh, such as uh, abscesses or sometimes uh, fistulae which are abnormal communications uh, of the intestine with other organs. Uh, and uh, fortunately, rarely, uh, cancer or hemorrhage, which means uh, bleeding. Well, there are many uh, new advances in the treatment of uh, uh, Crohn's disease, both in the uh, medical treatment uh, as well as the surgical treatment uh, arena. Uh, if we concentrate just on the surgical treatment arena, I think that uh, the two main advances have been the introduction of uh, bowel sparing procedures as well as uh, laparoscopy minimal invasive surgery. Now, this is a disease that unfortunately is recurrent. And even when it is removed completely surgically, chances are that eventually, sooner or later, I'll come back again and may require additional surgical procedures. In view of uh, several procedures required in a lifetime, uh, if these procedures are all based on resecting uh, intestine, the end point uh, is going to be a short intestine, a short gut. And so about uh, 30 years ago, surgeons came up with the idea of uh, strictioplasties. Strictioplasties are bowel-saving procedures, which means that uh, the complications of Crohn's disease, especially the obstructive complications, the narrow points that Crohn's disease can create in the intestine, are taken care of with a procedure that is not based on resecting the intestine, but actually making it larger. These are strictoplasties. And uh, over the course of uh, uh, 30 years, uh, many strictoplasties have, uh, have been described, and actually 15 years ago, I produced a strictoplasty that at that time was called the side-to-side -side isoperistaltic strictoplasty, and since then now is referred to as the Michalassi strictoplasty, um, for extensive Crohn's disease of the small bowel and severe Crohn's disease of the uh, small bowel. The other advance, I said, is the uh, minimal invasive approaches. Nowadays, uh, most surgical procedures can be done with laparoscopy uh, through very small incisions. To the, advance, uh, to the ad advantage of the patient. Uh, first of all, a uh, smaller incision, a more cos cosmetically pleasing result, and most importantly, a faster recovery. Well, actually, uh, things have uh, changed uh, dramatically in the last uh, 10, 15 years. Patients used to stay in the hospital a week or two after even the simplest uh, procedure for uh, 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 Crohn's disease. But now, due to the advances uh, with minimal invasive surgery, uh, due to uh, uh, some changes in the treatment of these patients, such as avoidance of uh, the uh, nasogastric tube, uh, a plastic tube that we used to put from the nose down in the stomach, patients recover much faster, and the average length of stay after an abdominal procedure for uh, Crohn's disease uh, is uh, four to five days. Well, unfortunately, we still do not know what causes uh, Crohn's disease nowadays. Uh, there are several theories, and uh, some of them have been substantiated uh, by practice and by data. We know for sure that 10% uh, of patients, uh, at least 10% of patients, have a genetic uh, predisposition uh, to Crohn's disease. Other theories also suggest that the uh, environmental uh, uh, agents uh, have a role in it. Uh, some also suggest that uh, infections uh, and therefore 
microbiological agents uh, have a role into the inception of Crohn's disease uh, and finally other theories uh, ascribe uh, a different uh, immunological defense uh, of an individual to be at the basis of uh, Crohn's disease. Whatever it is, uh, it's pretty clear at this point that this is a multifactorial uh, etiology and uh, therefore still escaping uh, uh, a, a clear and simple explanation for for the uh, Crohn's disease. Now over the past uh, uh, 50 years, but certainly over the uh, recent 10-15, uh, uh, a lot of advances uh, have been uh, um, uh, achieved, uh, both in the medical treatment as well as the uh, surgical treatment. And in the medical treatment, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, past are the times when Crohn's disease was treated just with uh, steroids. And uh, the introduction of biologicals have uh, really uh, changed the history of the, of the disease, the natural history of the disease. And surgically, uh, uh, the advances of laparoscopic uh, and uh, bowel sparing procedures have been uh, equally important. Uh, so um, both uh, uh, the gastroenterologist and the surgeons uh, contribute uh, tremendously uh, to the uh, care of the patients with Crohn's disease, uh, aided uh, by the radiologist and the pathologist uh, uh, when necessary. It is nowadays a disease that uh, cannot be cured as yet. It is a disease that is recurrent, but I think that in the appropriate hands of a, a, a very expert uh, gastroenterologist uh, and a, a skillful surgeon, uh, the uh, Crohn's disease uh, complications can be taken care of uh, maintaining in mind uh, the quality of life of the patient and uh, the uh, ability of uh, recovering from the disease and from the medical treatment and surgical treatment uh, with the least possible complications. Yeah, the first side-to-side uh, -side isoperistaltic stricoplasty that I uh, performed uh, was in 1993. And uh, I did not publish uh, the results until 1996 because I wanted to perform a few and uh, make sure that indeed uh, the procedure was uh, safe and reproducible. Uh, then uh, uh, with time I collected my own experience and by 2000 I presented uh, many, a series with a large number of side-to-side uh, -side stricoplasties uh, followed for several, several years. Uh, to uh, indeed make sure that the, the beneficial effects of the cystroplasty were lasting uh, over uh, the postoperative uh, course and over several years. That paper really uh, published in 2000 uh, uh, made uh, the community of surgeons uh, uh, aware of this new cystroplasty and since then uh, this cystroplasty has been adopted uh, by many surgeons uh, with large inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease practices around the world. And uh, I w it's probably safe to say, although nobody really has uh, um, precise numbers, that at this point, uh, hundreds of side-to-side uh, -side, uh, stricoplasty procedures uh, have been performed uh, around the world uh, uh, by many different surgeons. Well, traditional stricoplasties such as the Heineke Mikuluk stricoplasty or the uh, Finnish stricoplasties uh, uh, are well suited to uh, narrow and short uh, strictures. And uh, they can be indeed performed for multiple strictures, but when a patient presents with severe and extensive uh, uh, strictures over a long length of intestine, such as a foot, or two or three feet, the side-to-side -side stricoplasty is uh, better suited uh, for these uh, patients, uh, while the uh, traditional Haneke Mikulix or Finnish stricoplasty would be uh, really not particularly good at addressing uh, this uh, 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 particular uh, disposition of strictures. So it's very important that a surgeon be extremely familiar with all kinds of stricoplasties and all kinds of uh, bowel saving procedure because it is not until the time of surgery that you can really decide that which one is the uh, best fit for that particular uh, patient and in many times it's a hanechemical stricoplasty, sometimes it's a finished stricoplasty, but in some severe and extensive Crohn's disease uh, the surgeon may be called 
to perform a side-to-side -side isoperistaltic stricturoplasty. Well, it really depends on many factors, um, on the work that you do. Uh, if it's a heavy physical work or is a desk a job, that makes a big difference. Also, it all depends on the amount of recuperation that you have to do, not only from uh, the uh, surgery, but also from the condition itself. Sometimes uh, Crohn's disease is so debilitating, the patients come to surgery already quite debilitated and they have to recover not only from the surgery itself, but also from the debilitation before the surgery. But taking in consideration all this, I think that uh, patients usually can return to work uh, about 10 to 14 days after discharge from the hospital. And sometimes uh, it may take uh, three or four weeks uh, if there is uh, some recovery to be done, as I said before, from the debilitating effect of uh, Crohn's disease, uh, which have taken place even before the surgery itself. But in general, I would say that it's a safe bet to say that everybody can return to work uh, between 10 and uh, 21 days after discharge from the, uh, from the surgery.